Godot 4.2 allows you to automatically generate 2D nav meshes from objects and even use your tile map collisions for that. Making changes to navigation zones could not be easier now. Here's how to do it and what you should look out for. First, we need to add a navigation region 2D node to our scene. This will allow us to create our 2D nav mesh, used for the AI path timing. Create a navigation polygon or click anywhere on the screen to get a prompt to do so. We can now draw our nav mesh zone area. Let's draw a polygon of the general area of the map. And press bake to create it. To get the nav mesh to understand our tile map, we need to do two things first. First, let's select our tile map and make sure we have our physics layer set up. Under the tile cell asset, create a physics layer with the add element button. This allows us to create tiles with colliders that we can use to create our nav mesh. Open the tile set window below, select the paint tab and choose the physics layer 0. We can paint which tile should have collisions inside here. Clicking on the tiles will play the displayed polygon at the center as the tiles collider. Let's set the whole tile as a wall and paint our obstacles. Next, we need to tell our navigation region what are obstacles. Let's expand the navigation polygon. By default, the navigation region will only look for static colliders inside its own children, which is not what we want. Change the source geometry mode to group with children. This will have our nav mesh look for obstacles that are inside the group name below. And let's change the name of that group to navigation, so it looks better. Now we only need to add our tile map to the navigation group. Select the tile set, and under the node tab, select groups. Type navigation and click add. A square icon will be displayed on the tile map node now, showing that it has a group. And now we can finally bake our nav mesh. One thing to note is that the nav mesh will only consider the first drawing layer of the tile map. So adding obstacles on the layer above will have no effect. One way to overcome that is by drawing a wall on the first layer, putting the ground tile on the second layer, and finally your obstacle tile on the next one. Inside the navigation polygon, one important configuration we need to adjust is the radius. This tells us how much of a margin the nav mesh should have from the walls. If the margin is too big, we will have unwanted breaks like this. Setting this to one pixel, now the nav mesh will snugly fit in. But that is also not good. If the margin is too little, the chance of getting stuck in corners is very big. For tile maps, I found that a radius of a little below half the tile size seems to work the best. This tile set uses 16 by 16 pixels, so a 7 pixel radius works quite well. We can easily overcome corners without getting stuck now. Next we have our cell size. This is how precise our nav mesh is. You can increase this number to gain more performance at the expense of precision. This needs to be the same number as the navigation cell size in the project settings. If you don't do this, you'll find this error. You can keep this as 1 or at a very small number and change this later if your navigation is slowing down your game. Setting this at half the size or one quarter of the size of the tile size seems to work best. If this number is too high, you can find bad pathfinding and synchronization errors. We can also add other objects to our navigation group and have them be affected as well. As long as they have a static collider and are inside the group, our nav mesh will use them as walls. Just rebake the nav mesh to update it later. You can leave holes in our nav mesh baking zone if you want. After creating the first zone, Select the top icon and draw another polygon inside. But be careful, as this only works if the polygon drawing order is in the reverse order of the outside polygon. So, if you draw the bigger polygon clockwise, it will only identify holes inside that are drawn in the counterclockwise order. You can hover over a point to see the point index and check which order it is drawn in. You can use the debug visible navigation to display the nav mesh inside your game. To use the nav mesh, we need the navigation agent 2D inside our NPC object. The important things here are the path and target desired distance. It sets how close the agent will try to get to a point before moving to the next one or stopping. And we can also enable the bug to show the path line of the agent to better understand its route. This is not an AI navigation tutorial, but here is the code for the NPC, just so we can test our map. Another really cool thing we can do is merge two nav meshes together, so we have a zone that is less likely to be used by an NPC. Like for example, a sand tile where we walk slower. 
Let's remove the rocky area from our nav mesh polygon and create another navigation region 2D with the same navigation group and parameters. And draw its areas on the section we just removed. If they are close enough together and use edge connections is turned on, Godot will automatically create joint points where the agents can move between them. You can adjust how close they need to be in the project settings, edge connection margin. For tile maps, I find that half their tile size works quite well. Now, if we put our nav meshes close enough, they'll be linked together. Running the game with the bug navigation turned on, you'll be able to see purple lines where the connection is. With this, we can set the travel cost greater than 1 to the rocky area. And now the NPC will prefer to enter the upper path, even if it is longer. You can adjust the travel cost and see its results. In this example, we can set the travel cost to 1.5, and the travel cost of both paths will be about the same. And that's it! A quick overview on how to bake 2D nav meshes. I hope this video helps, and until next time!